Okay, so to start off with, I am absolutely so embarrassed at the fact that it's took me this long to actually film and do this video. So of course, in this video, I'm going to be chit-chatting to you about basically our house buying experience. And then I also have a wee Q&A from you guys as well. I had asked you to ask me so many questions that you just wanted to know in a YouTube video. So I've actually just had to go through like three months worth of YouTube videos to try and find that video to find your questions. And I find it. Hey. <laughs> and I don't really feel like I need to give a wee bit of a disclaimer but I kind of want to at the same time. Obviously whenever I'm going to be like talking about things or sharing my experience or giving my, my little humble opinion, take it with a pinch of salt. What I say is not gospel. <laughs> um, obviously my experience is going to be completely different to everybody else's personal experience. So we basically bought this house just the end of last year. It was around November time. So I got my diary from last year and I have my diary from this year because obviously because we bought the house the end of last year it carried on until after Christmas. So basically I'm just going to start from like the very very beginning. <laughs> we have been looking or trying to save for a house for a year and a half. Um, this is one th one thing that I was uh, very confused about and I did not know where to go to, who to turn to or what to do. It's like, right, okay, so we've obviously saved X amount of money. What do I do now? I want to buy a house. What is my next step? And we were just advised, go into a bank. Go into a bank, tell them that you want to speak to their mortgage advisor or speak to somebody that will be able to point them in the right direction or just give them a wee bit of advice. We had went into three banks. We ended up noticing a wee bit of a pattern going on every single time we went into a bank. The first question we were always asked was, have you found or seen a house? So then they would be able to like evaluate how much this house was that you found compared to how much you have saved. And they would kind of be able to take it from there. Because we kept on being told that, we started to look for houses. We obviously sat down and discussed with each other where we wanted to live and the area and maybe what we wanted, what we were looking for, so that we were both on the same page. So then once we had discussed and agreed on where we actually wanted to live, like the area or particular areas that we were interested in, I actually downloaded the app Property Pal and I was actually able to, on the map, <laughs> draw an area on the map on where we were actually looking for houses and basically I had obviously hooked up my email to it so it basically meant that anytime a house became available in the area that I had kind of drawn out for myself I was emailed immediately with the the houses. We're going to fast forward to Friday the 19th so obviously we're still both living at our parents' house. My Friday night routine was to go up to Kyle's house for the weekend. I went up on a Friday and I stayed there until the Sunday. And I'll never forget it. I was literally packing my bags and I was just going downstairs to say goodbye to my mum and I think my granny was there as well. Came back upstairs again to get my keys and my bags. But my phone had went and it was an email from Property Pal and I don't know, I just, for some reason, I just felt the need to just sit in my bed before I left to scroll through the Property Pal email with all the houses that again had became available in the area that we were looking at. And I was scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. And then the next minute I just came to a dead stop. And I just, oh, I felt sick. I wanted to scream, I wanted to laugh, I wanted to cry, I wanted to be sick, I wanted to shit my pants. I don't know. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> I just, oh, something about this house. From that moment I knew that that was the house for us. It ticked literally every single box, every single box and it just, oh my god, it just, mm. It made me feel some type of way. I was not letting this house go. <laughs> so come the Monday, I had rang first thing on the Monday morning and seen if we could have a viewing of the house. So basically like the company that was selling the house, I had obviously rang them and booked a viewing. So I booked a viewing for the Tuesday. So that Tuesday was the first viewing that we had and then on the Friday of the same week, we had another viewing. And we wanted to put an offer on the house basically, but we couldn't. We couldn't because we didn't have a mortgage. So this is now where it gets really, really confusing. 
uh, basically the company that we were buying or, or purchasing the house off uh, provided us with a mortgage advisor. Me and Kyle had an we hadn't a baldy when it came to mortgages and the ins and outs, how it works or whatever. So if you're the same as us, I would really highly suggest getting a mortgage advisor. Don't get me wrong, we did have to pay for it and they're not cheap, but they are so worth it. Guys, they do everything for you, literally everything. They're basically the ones that find you a mortgage. They dealt with our house insurance, contents cover, life insurance, they basically done everything. So basically now it was the time where we kind of sort out the finances, me and Kyle's money. <laughs> what we could afford, what we couldn't afford, what savings we have, the deposit we were going to put down. Because I'm self-employed, I do my own taxes, I had to send over like my tax returns for the past three or four years. I think it actually took us about a week between the two of us to send over all of our bank statements from every single bank card me and Kyle both have. Then we got the call to say that we were accepted for a mortgage and that was the following Friday. And you'll actually notice that quite a lot of things seem to happen on Fridays and there was, throughout my life, Friday has always been a particular day that things always happen. <laughs> uh, what am I doing? So yeah, we put an offer on, they accepted it, we got the house, case closed. And I'll say, best Friday of my life. <laughs> so this was the 3rd of December, by the way, but we didn't get like our mortgage completely finalized until like, it definitely had to have been on to next year, or this year, sorry. I remember somebody actually saying to us, because we had no idea how long it was going to take from to, uh, to get a mortgage, like from start to finish, like the whole process is so long. And somebody had said to us, oh, it'll maybe take me about eight to 12 weeks. And I was like, yeah, freaking what? It was so much longer than that. It honestly felt like months. <laughs> We're now in February. <laughs> Again. A Friday our mortgage got approved but things still weren't completely finalized yet because you obviously need to start sorting things out with your solicitor and that's obviously somebody else you need to pay the solicitor fees oh my god oh my god the solicitor fees are a killer <laughs> but we eventually got the keys like I literally have wrote down here supposed to get the keys didn't happen still no keys Still no keys. Still no keys. Still no keys. <laughs> Got the keys on the 5th of April. Overall, everything took about four or five months, you know? And like, I have to say, that's not really that bad between us actually finding the house, getting a mortgage, getting accepted for a mortgage, putting an offer on, getting the mortgage all sorted. You know, having all the slitter stuff inside like five months, four or five months, I genuinely don't think it's actually that bad, but it's still a lengthy process and it's definitely a process that I never, ever, 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 ever want to do ever again in my entire life. <laughs> I've never been so stressed in my life, guys, and honestly, see whenever it comes to a mortgage advisor, get one, just get one. You might have to pay for them. And honestly, at every corner with buying a house, you literally have to pay for everything. And there's just, you're just throwing money just around you constantly with it. But everything is so worth it in the end. It really, really is. <gasps> we didn't move in until Friday, <laughs> the 27th of May. That's wild. Do you know what it was? It took us so long to get the internet. And that's also why we haven't moved in because the internet is my life, the internet is my job. And um, basically because where our house is, we're quite out in the country by the way. <laughs> um, you, we literally get no signal, no nothing, no 3G, no 4G, no nothing. It's the only time I wanna just make a call, I have to go into the nearest town. <laughs> so just in case you're really thinking I didn't give too much away in terms of like advice or anything to do with like the actual prices of things and stuff, that's obviously gonna be coming up now in the Q&A. So I'm just gonna go through like the questions. I think I'll start from like say the bottom and work my way up. 
A lot of people had asked as well, was there any regrets I had in the house buying process or was there anything I would have done differently? And I have to say, I have kind of thought about that question quite a bit and honestly, there isn't. I am so, so lucky that I'm able to actually say, no, I don't have any regrets. I honestly do feel like when you have a mortgage advisor, they're just able to <laughs> advise you through literally every single stage and every single step and just guide you along the way and you know like they don't make the decisions for you they are just letting you make the decisions but i'm advising you to go down the right path and not to make mistakes and not to you know maybe regret some things down the line or whatever um they honestly are such fantastic help within the house buying and mortgage process and stuff um but no i don't have any regrets and i suppose like that's like the shitty thing about kyle not being here is because i don't know actually <laughs> if he would have any regrets and i don't actually think he would i think we're both pretty uh like mutual with and how we feel with the house buying process so Somebody had asked, did we both have a budget? As I had mentioned there, yeah, we did have a budget originally to start with whenever we first started looking at houses. Um, we were looking around a, a budget that was affordable for us and realistic. You know, like we're first time buyers, we, you know, beggars can't be choosers. You obviously have to live within your means. Just because I feel like nobody really needs to know the price of the house, I'm not going to mention, I'm not going to say. Um, nobody needs to know that. <laughs> and I'm not being disrespectful or cheeky or mean, it's just, I don't know, it's just like, like privacy and stuff and I just don't really feel like I need to share that. What about a deposit? Do you need to save so much or what? That all depends on the price of your house. Most houses um, will require a deposit of either 15 or 10%. So basically whatever cost is of your house say you're looking at a house that is two hundred thousand pound whatever ten percent of two hundred thousand pound is or whatever fifteen percent of two hundred thousand pound is that is how much you're going to have to give up front for that house what kind of hidden fees are there since i heard you mention them so yeah that was that was another kicker <laughs> i actually have like the sheet for like the hidden fees and stuff. It's actually called a statement of account. So basically this is every single penny that we spent to get into this house. In total, the hidden fees came to a cost of six, 650, I think. Is that, would, that, would I be correct in saying that? I think so, we're just gonna go for that anyway. So there was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. In total, there was like 10 hidden fees. And actually, before I get into it, I, I know they're called like hidden fees, but they're not like hidden for any particular reason, or they're not like, oh, now that you've bought this house, you have to pay 650 pound for things we're not going to tell you because they're hidden you will basically get a list of them okay so basically we were charged over 200 pound for land registry bank transfer fee we were charged 20 pound for that um a priority search over 30 pound we got a bankruptcy search which cost over 50 pounds like they charged us over 50 pound 52 pound it's you know and it's like with that prices are you trying to make us bankrupt charge and cch whatever that is that was 110 pound how do you decide on how much each one of you is going to contribute onto savings and that literally just depends on whoever it doesn't really matter to be honest it literally makes no difference and does it depend on who has the most money no it doesn't so basically me and Kyle's mortgage is it's just both of our mortgage it's a shared mortgage like both of our names is on the mortgage um it literally makes no difference at all how long did it both take us to save so it took us about a year and a half to save or deposit um which I was actually really, really chuffed about. Um, don't get me wrong, like, see if I hadn't have found this house when I did, we obviously would have still kept on saving and we probably could have got a bigger and better house. Not bigger and better, but 
you know, we probably, because we would have had more saved, we probably could have got like a more expensive house, but this house is just perfect for me. So I was fine. <laughs> did you choose a budget or, did you choose a budget or does the mortgage company choose? Um, oh, I see what you mean now. Ooh, so obviously whenever you give them over all of your statements, um, like your bank statements and stuff, um, like you, you just, you have to, by the way, um, they are able to calculate what you and your partner are able to afford based on both of your earnings. Like take an example, like with Kyle's earnings, based on what he earns a year, he was actually able to get a mortgage just off what he earns a year. And then obviously with my yearly earnings contributed to that, um, we were able to get like a pretty decently priced house to be honest, which obviously was this one then. Um, so somebody had asked like how much deposit we saved. So we actually ended up saving 15, 15,000 pound. So 15 grand, which I'm, I'm, I was actually pretty happy with to be honest. And do you know what actually, I may as well just tell you is like how we ended up saving that. We were both living with our parents. We were able to save and put away whatever we wanted. Um, and then Kyle had an ISA account. Anybody who doesn't know, I suppose, basically over here in Northern Ireland and the UK, the banks have this thing where it's like an ISA account, like an ISA help to buy. So basically it's a savings account. So basically every time you put money into it, um, like the interest is added onto it. But then also whenever it comes to you actually buying your house, how much you have in that, um, I think the government adds like 25% of it towards it, like towards your actual house. Basically me and Kyle both had a nice account. I was actually doing so well with mine. I had quite a bit of money in it and then I took everything out and spent it. I went at a freaking shopping spree and I spoiled myself. <laughs> Oh well. This is like the last question by the way. I got a lot on what sold us on the particular house. Um, how did you know it was the one? But I am a very big believer in things happen for a reason. Um, and I kind of feel like this house was one of them. That's like one of the reasons why like I literally could not let this house go. Again, it just happened to be a Friday night <laughs> and I was actually coming up here to stay at Kyle's house and I was actually supposed to meet Kyle somewhere. So I actually ended up meeting him here in this village. So if you don't know, we live in a wee village. It's literally full of old people. I, I'm looking out at a church and then out my front I'm looking at cows. <laughs> it's literally just like a wee country village we're in there so I know we're a bit sure whatever. Um, so it just turned out that I actually met Kyle here in this village and I was actually parked like across the road and I was just sitting in my car I was probably having a smoke and I was just like huh in there has really nice wee houses. And that, like, I remember sitting thinking to myself, right, see when it comes time for me and Kyle to actually start looking at houses, I must actually look in here and look around here. Honest to God, like that's what I was literally sitting thinking and I was like, them houses are really nice in there. And looking back now, <laughs> little did I know I was actually looking at this house. Not like the front, but I could literally just see like the side, like the back and the side of it. Then another reason was, um, obviously, as I had mentioned, I got emails like every week, every day or whatever on Property Pal that would have sent me houses that were available in the areas we were looking at. So basically a house actually came up in this area and it was actually across the road, like down there but across the road. Um, and of course I jumped at it, I jumped at it and me and Kyle went to actually go and look at it one day, like literally, because there were still people in it, it was still occupied, um, we literally just like drove past it and drove back again. But because in here is a wee cul-de-sac, whenever you drive down there, you have to actually drive or turn, you have to turn and come back out past my house again. And basically whenever we went to view that house down there, I'm not being disrespectful, but it was a shithole. <laughs> there was like green glit coming from holes in the walls and there was this like rubbish outside. And whenever I say rubbish, it was just like 
toys and stuff it was just like yeah no no the house was also scarily cheap for some reason and it was like yeah I think you, you kind of get what you pay for no no so basically on our way out again we drove past this house so basically our house is in the corner um and beside us we just have like two wee bungalows but our house is like a standalone house like we have nobody attached to us or anything as we're driving out um obviously this house was on the passenger side so I was obviously looking out and I spied this house I looked at it and I was like something like that would be perfect for us and then we just drove on like obviously by this stage the house wasn't up for sale <laughs> but honestly like I just remember sitting and I just glanced at it and thought to myself something like that would be perfect but obviously it wasn't for sale and there was no for sale sign up so it was just like that's obviously just somebody's house but that would be perfect and I'm sitting on it <laughs> But yeah, it was just, just wee things like that and also like I just feel like your gut feeling, you get that feeling for a reason and I, I went with it. I literally couldn't let this house go. I just knew that it was meant to be. And obviously like that's us now. We've been in here for four and a half months now. If you have any more questions or whatever, feel free to ask me. But honestly, any advice I gave, just take with a pinch of salt and it was obviously just my experience and I can only speak for myself and obviously Kyle might have a different experience for me but unfortunately he's not here I can't speak for him but yeah I hope you did enjoy this video I hope it was a wee bit informative in some shape or form <laughs> um but yeah guys thank you so so much for watching this video anyway and I hope to see you in my next one